A few months ago, I was really, really nervous. And when I say nervous, I don't mean just nervous. I mean so nervous that I couldn't even touch a slice of pizza or the tons of boxes kept at the venue. And I love pizza, so this is clearly a very, very big deal to me. It is basically a New York University in Abu Dhabi. It was for a boot camp slash competition, which basically took your idea and taught you how to convert it into a business. Now this boot camp was amazing, but I, being a student from mechatronics engineering, which is a technical field, I had no knowledge about anything related to business. And I'm looking at all these business model canvases, value proposition canvases, market segmenting, uh, customer validation, stuff I've never even seen before. So it was insane for me. And this incident happened on the day of my event, basically. So I still remember I was walking through the audience to face them. And there were just tons of things rolling around in my head, like, what am I doing? Should I just go back home? Should I just run out of here? Why am I not eating pizza right now? There's just tons of things rolling around in my head. But I gathered my guts. I went in front of the people. I faced them. I took a deep breath. And I began my presentation, which looked horrible. Maybe it's not working right now, but it looked horrible. The text was completely out of the slide. It was zoomed in. And to top it off, my presentation for this, oh, thank you so much, but <laughs> apologies. OK. This is what my presentation looked like. Now, it may seem like an IT error, but let me assure you, it isn't. This is what my presentation looked like. And to top it off, my particular speech for the slide went something like, in the world, there are 285 million people who face some form of visual imparity. Now, I said this with total confidence, like, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. But as most of you did notice, I said the number wrong, which I did intentionally hear, but definitely unintentionally at the point. And so the, thing, the whole thing was awful. The business model lacked everything important. The facts were wrong. The presentation looked like this. So everything that could go wrong went wrong. And at this point, everyone thought, OK, this team is totally out of it. Like, they are hopeless. They don't even know how to form a basic business model. Like, what are they even in the competition for? But now, let me tell you the best part. In the end, me and my friend Habib, we ended up being awarded the prize for the best business model in the entire competition. So how did we even do it? How did we go from knowing nothing about business models to actually making and winning a competition based on it? Like what? So it was all thanks to osmosis. Now osmosis, as most of us know us, is the scientific definition, which is the flow of solar molecules from a lower potential lower solubility to a higher solubility medium through a semi-permeable membrane. Just to explain this in easier terms, we can take the example of a couple of reasons in a container of water. In the beginning, they're all tiny, dry, wrinkled, but as they absorb the water around them, they become big and plump. But we are humans and not raisins, so the definition does vary in terms of human psychology. It is the, it is the process of gradual assimilation of ideas, knowledge, skills, experiences, etc. So, okay, this is the definition, but what do I actually mean when I say osmosis and when I say I learned through osmosis? I mean, instead of taking the traditional means of studying, which is reading books or watching videos, I learned from other people and their experiences. I approached businessmen who have developed their own business models. I approached my professors who have helped as consultants for many businesses to make the business models. I understood the terminologies involved. I understood all the various factors that make the business models unique from each other. Basically, all the ins and outs of it. First hand to people who are successfully doing it. Only because of which I actually ended up making a good one myself. Just, just think about it. the last time when you saw a video, maybe like a cooking video, if you wanted to try cooking a new dish for the first time, the video might have seemed very, very simple, like very straightforward. Okay, there's a recipe, there's the amount of ingredients, you just mix them together, and there you go. But when you actually go to do it, there are like tens of issues which you didn't even think could occur. And then to troubleshoot them, you need another more time. But what if there was this really, really expert chef with you? While you were doing the mistake, you could already point it out to you, like, oh, no, you're doing it wrong. Like, he has experienced it. So he can help you learn it quicker and in lesser time. So, OK, I, you understand what osmosis is, but why does it actually work? 
whenever we learn a skill in our life, there is a particular learning curve that we have to go through. Now this learning curve differs from person to person and skill to skill. This learning curve is basically an assimilation of everything that we have done in our life till date. You want to learn a new musical instrument and you have learned a different one prior. Then learning this new one will be comparatively simpler just because you have that rhythm sense and you know how to approach the particular problem. But what if it is a skill which you don't have any base or any foundation set up? This learning curve is going to be pretty long for the same. But what if your best friend is really good at it? He can immediately point out what to do and how to troubleshoot the particular methods and possibly even gain tips and tricks which you cannot get anywhere else. So osmosis, that's how osmosis works. And you want to try osmosis. You want to learn a new skill using osmosis. That's amazing. But I would like you to keep these three key points always in mind. The first being, be spontaneous. When I say spontaneous, I mean literally spontaneous. Get out of your comfort zone, meet new people, learn new skills, learn skills which are completely relevant to your field. Just because you never know when they might come in handy, integrate those skills and make something unique out of it. Because the day you decide to be stagnant in your own profession and in your own comfort zone is the day when you stop evolving into a better version of yourself. The second point being the semi-permeable membrane. Now this membrane is a literal filter that we need to apply whenever performing osmosis because when we learn a particular skill from a person or a group of people, they might be really good at that skill, but they always have some negatives attached to that positive quality. And we need to learn how to filter out those negatives absorbing the positive ones. Because if you do absorb all of their negative aspects, then you might end up harming yourself. The third point being possibly the most important point. Avoid diffusion. And diffusion is basically a reverse osmosis process. It is when the solid molecules go from a higher solubility to a lower solubility. So what I mean is be very, very careful when choosing the person to learn from because if that person hasn't achieved the success that he has through the correct means and through hard work, then you might end up unlearning and even losing the base foundation that you had set up and literally taking a few steps back and forgetting what you even knew in the first place. So. Learn new skills using osmosis, stay ahead of the curve, stay future ready, learn skills that others are struggling to study by taking help of people who have already experienced it. Because we humans are programmed to learn by doing and repeating. And believe me when I say this, success achieved by learning through traditional means can make you a living, but the success achieved by self-learning through osmosis can make you a fortune. Thank you.